Hi, Gavin. My name is Jill. And this is truly an honor to share and create this video for you. I'm sure you looked at the book and thought it was for someone much younger. But see, Grandma and Grandpa Hankins wanted you to have the message of hope this gift brings to you. Now, this story didn't happen just overnight. It has taken my lifetime. You see, in the story, there's a character, Olivia, which I will be playing that in a moment, and the donkey who carried Mary to Bethlehem. His name is Havivi, and they had a special love for one another. But here's the neat thing. When I was a little girl, we were going to have a new cult, and everyone knew that was going to be my little baby. And my dad and I walked out into the pasture, and we honestly thought somebody played a joke on us because there looked like a tiny little donkey in, in the pasture. But it wasn't a donkey. It was my horse, which was an Appaloosa. He wasn't very cute, <laughs> but he was to me, actually. And he truly was my best friend. But you see, God allowed me to experience that as a child and cherish those memories and those moments my entire life. Why? Because he was calling me to write this story. And I needed to understand in order to portray the love between these two characters. You see, you never know what God is preparing you for. And Gavin, I am praying for you because God has great big plans for you. Now you just have to start looking and listening. Now this is a very special gift to you through the eyes of a donkey. It is a story of Jesus' birth told from the perspective of the donkey who carried Mary to Bethlehem. And this is a gift given to you by Grandma and Grandpa Hankins. Let's get started. So hi, my name is Olivia and I'm excited to share a beautiful story with you. The power of God works in and through the lives of all of us. Gavin, do you know who Jesus is? Well, this story is about how God used a simple little donkey to help Jesus. When I was a baby, my family received a little donkey to help carry me around. His name was Havivi, which means friend or dearly loved in Hebrew. Here's a challenge, Gavin. Can you say Havivi? <laughs> He was always by my side and watched over me. He would tickle me with his fuzzy nose on my cheek, making me giggle. You know, Gavin, he was my best friend. And we had no secrets. And Havivi shared the best stories. It's true. He could talk, just like the donkey in the Bible. You can find that story in the book of Numbers, chapter 22, verse 28. You have to read that story too. You see, because it's going to show you, Gavin, how with God, all things are possible. Havivi was truly a special gift from God. One day, my father said that God told him that Havivi must go to our neighbor, Joseph. Joseph, his wife, Mary, and their unborn child were required to travel to Bethlehem to register for the king. Even though I was heartbroken at the thought he would no longer be mine. I knew he would never be far from me. Havivi told me about how he carried Mary on his back, and he stepped gently to make sure he did not slip and fall. He asked God to guide his footsteps and heard God's voice in his ear with words of comfort and wisdom. With each mile, Havivi grew stronger. His confidence soared because he knew God chose him. And Gavin, God has chosen you for something special. Now, arriving in Bethlehem, they tried to find their way through the enormous crowd. Havivi was alert and tried not to stumble on the cobblestone streets. Again, he felt God's presence of peace as they moved along their divine path. The day turned to night quickly, and Joseph knew that he had to find a place to rest. Barry would brush Havivi's fur with a mother's touch, 
she would gently talk to him along the way, showing her love for him. Joseph couldn't find an inn because they were all full. But finally, an innkeeper took mercy on them and offered them a place in his barn. Because the journey was long, Habibi began to drift off to sleep. There was a gentle breeze, a beautiful scent, and now a new sound in the barn. The voice of a baby was such a blessing to the ears. High in the sky, a star shone bright like a diamond on that holy night. That night, there were shepherds in the field attending to their sheep. The angel of the Lord appeared and told them the great news that their Lord and Savior had been born in Bethlehem, the city of David. The angel told them to follow the star to the Holy Child. Oh, filled with joy, they began their journey to this holy place to bring honor to the king. The shepherds followed the star and quietly entered the stable. A little shepherd boy knelt beside Jesus and began to sing sweetly in his ear to bring him honor. Havivi felt it his duty to watch over this baby while others entered that night. So with his nose, he squeezed in to be by this precious child. Now King Herod heard about this precious child, and so he ordered three wise men to go and immediately report back to him. When they saw the star, a great joy filled their hearts. When they arrived in the stable, they bowed down to the King of Kings and the Son of God. Gavin, they presented him with frankincense, gold, and myrrh. This Son of God slept by candlelight. His glow warmed the cool night air. As the shepherd boy continued to sing, a small child known as the drummer boy began to keep time. The heavenly music soothed their souls. Habibi watched as Mary wrapped Jesus in his blanket, and he marveled at how her touch was so gentle. Mary began to settle in, but turned and looked at her sweet donkey. Walking to Habibi, she threw her arms around his neck and said, Thank you. You have served God well. Mary then led Habibi to Jesus and asked him to watch over him in the night. Snuggling up to the sweet boy, Havivi watched every breath he took. In the quiet of the night, Havivi began to realize how God had called him for this divine moment. That honor filled his heart with joy. Gavin, I hope you've enjoyed this story. Havivi has taught us many things. His words will forever ring in my ears. As I snuggled up against his neck, Habibi said to make Jesus my best friend and ask him into my heart. Remember, Jesus is always near, so never be afraid and always look for God's hope in my life. Gavin, this message is for you. May you be blessed to know that you are loved. Your friends, Olivia and Habibi. Well, this story has come to an end, but your hope journey is just beginning. Now, there are stories and activities at the back of the book. I encourage you to find hope. But Gavin, you know, I want to share one more thing with you. There is a part of the book in the back that says Olivia, and it breaks down the name Olivia to obey God, to love Him with all your heart, invest in the gifts that God has given you, vow to serve Him with those gifts, imagine the possibilities, and always know that God is with you. Years ago, I handled a lot of mission trips, and I had people flying all over the world. 
And there was this one woman who her husband always went. And she was talking to me about how, you know, she may pay for the airline ticket. But she was not really involved in the mission. And she wanted to do more for God. So she was asking me, how can she be more involved without traveling around the world? And this question kind of bubbled up in me. And it's not from me. It was from God. So the question was to her, what is it you love to do, never get tired of, and love to talk about it without end? And without even a breath, she says, shopping. <laughs> oh, okay. So Gavin, I didn't know how to respond to her. So I told her, let's pray about it. Let's see if God can reveal how you can shop for him. We kind of both chuckled. A few weeks later, she called me and I could see it was her from the caller ID. But I couldn't tell what she was saying because she was crying and she was laughing all at the same time. So I waited for her to calm down. And she says, I found out what I was supposed to do for God. You know how I like to find a good deal, right? I said, yeah, absolutely. She said, I took money to a shoe store. And I asked them, would they help? They gave me two times the amount of shoes I was buying. And these shoes are going to South America to an orphanage for children. Gavin, she began shopping for all of our mission trips. She knew how to find the deal. So when you serve God, it doesn't always mean in the mission field. It could be shopping. It could be talking about a donkey. <laughs> I pray for you, Gavin, that you find what you are to do in your life. Thank you for being a part of Hope Journey and Through the Eyes of a Donkey. And Merry Christmas to you. God bless you.